While the average undergraduate completes university with an average student debt load of at least 26000 if students supplement government student debt with a student credit card, bank loan, or student line of credit, their average debt balances upon graduation balloon to over $44,000. One issue is that this debt lingers. Only 34% of bachelor graduates had fully paid off their student loans three years after graduation. According to data on student loans, students typically take between 9 to 15 years to pay off their student loans in full. In the U.S., graduates take between 20 to 30 years to repay their student loans. And some don't get there. They declare insolvency first. They file bankruptcy or make a consumer proposal to creditors. So, our children are starting their working lives in the hole. Could this impede our child's ability to reach that next financial step, such as buying a home? Yes, it certainly could. Suppose your child wants to buy a starter home for $300,000, an amount below the average house cost. At the time of writing, the price of the average U.S. home hit $507,000 and the Canadian home $639,000. Even a 10% down payment at these averages is over $50,000, and since banks may require 20% down on a home purchase, the down payment becomes significant. You don't need to be a math whiz to see the difficulty here. Perhaps these facts are why the average age of a first-time homebuyer in North America has risen to 33 years old in 2022. Over the next 25 to 35 years, your child will be working and hopefully saving for their retirement. But squirreling away money for a healthy nest egg could be a struggle with the average time of 10 years it takes to pay off student debt add a mortgage, health costs, and day-to-day -day living expenses. This point is evidenced in the statistic that the average retirement savings are around $163,500. A troublesome finding from a CIBC poll stated that 30% of respondents said they have no retirement savings and 19% have saved less than 50,000. Moreover, if you took the average savings, and put it in an annuity, the monthly draw would only be a few hundred dollars. That won't go very far. Let's go back to the original question from the start of the chapter. When should you start saving for your child? The answer, as soon as you absolutely can. The sooner you start, the more money you can put away and the greater yields from compounding. But it's not just more time to accumulate dollars or the power of compounding that we're introducing here. Most of us understand those basic concepts. But you will get to your destination with greater ease when combining these facts with the right financial vehicle. Consider this. Parents are spending a significant portion of their income each year raising their children. The cost of raising one child in North America is estimated to be approximately $15,000 per year, which, over 18 years, equals $270,000. The average family has two children, so each family spends over half a million dollars raising children. Given these numbers don't include extra costs like hockey or piano lessons, the figure is likely much higher. So where is all this money going? How much of it is being kept to benefit the whole family in the future? Now, most of our clients understand the need to save for the future for themselves and their offspring. Typically, they come equipped with basic ideas about investing their money in the following three areas the stock market, real estate, or a business. It's not that these vehicles are flawed. On the contrary, they provide some pros, like a potential for high returns on investments and some tax sheltering. However, each of these tools has cons, such as management, learning curves, volatility associated with the market, non-inflationary proof, and potential unforeseen costs. As a result, the risks at times can outweigh the benefits. Let us tell you a story. A man, whom we will refer to as Jack, 
had been doing well with the stock market, and he had experienced some exceptional returns in one stock. All points led him to believe that this was the stock to be in, and he took all his available cash and bought as many shares as possible. He watched it diligently, and Jack's investment rose to $3 million. He was so excited that Jack told his family and friends about it and urged them to do the same. But unfortunately, the market tanked in the fall of 2008, and this man lost almost every penny. Jack was not a savvy investor. Like many who try their luck at a casino, Jack had tried his luck with the stock market, and he lost big. He had two kids in college at the time and one about to graduate from high school. His brother, who had followed his advice, stopped talking to him, as did a few friends. As a result, Jack sunk into a severe depression. Thankfully, though, his wife and kids rallied around him and got him back on his feet emotionally and, eventually, financially. Yes, this is a cautionary tale, but it demonstrates the risks we take in investing in things we don't understand and especially have no control over. We can't change the past, but we create a better tomorrow by what we do today. So our first advice to anyone struggling is don't look back at what you failed to do. Instead, take that failure and let it teach you what not to do and inspire you to avoid any future failure. <laughs>